don't we, about climate on this programme. I make absolutely no excuses for that. Um, and one of the concepts that perhaps we've all got used to, which is something we wouldn't have even talked about a few years ago, is the idea of carbon offsetting, where you kind of um, offset your carbon footprint by ploughing your money from your home or your business or your holiday or whatever into schemes that are good for the planet. Generally, when people talk about it, they tend to think about, oh, you know, I'm going to buy some rainforest in the tropics but we're going to talk now about something which is a lot closer to home which is a holiday park not a million miles from Lou, Trigode just on the road heading out towards Plymouth um, where they've chosen to offset their carbon emissions in a very different way. They have done it with the help of uh, Lucy Isaacson whose social enterprise climate vision is all about sort of encouraging people to make wise climate choices. And Lucy joins me now. Hello. Hi, Julie. It is a thing, isn't it? Everybody thinks you're going to, oh, I'll buy some rainforest. That's the thing to do. What have you done in this case? Well, we wanted to have a bit more of a local solution and a bit more interesting, but also there's something called natural capital. And by investing in a local farm, we've got a good story. We're helping a local farmer. And, you know, the thing about natural capital is if we look after nature, it has what we call ecosystem services. And that's just simply, it helps to stop flooding. It boosts biodiversity, which means more food on our plate. And it helps with a lot of other things, you know, but most of all, by planting a, a particular crop with a farmer locally, we can hold the carbon. As the roots go down, it will sequester the carbon they want to offset. So we've got Trigode Holiday Park. The owners there decided they wanted to do something to offset their carbon footprint. Just how much carbon were they generating? Do you, how do you calculate that? Well, you work it out, it's 170 tonnes that they've been... Over um, a year, is yeah, that a year? over a year. And there's some costs that we haven't been able to work out just yet because a lot of this is new, but those are the main things and the main things that people will count. And they're growing and they're developing. So this is something that they find really important and it's great because to go to really enthusiastic, they've won a lot of awards for what they do, but they're, they're really keen to do this and... One of my school friends, Liz Lean, that's in, in Dorset, she introduced me to them and they're, and they're really keen to look at their climate risks as well as um, dealing with their carbon. So what you can do is you set, you set a goal to do a net zero pathway plan and that just starts with, first of all, having a bit of a chat. It doesn't have to be a big deal and that's one of the things that Miranda says is it's great, I've made it possible for them to do but without a big struggle. So what kind of stuff were the big carbon generators in a holiday park operation when you looked through the numbers? The most things are energy use and transport. So, so would you count, say, for example, if a camper had come down from the Midlands, would that their fuel form part of not, that? Not at this stage, but what we will be doing and what we are doing is actually trying to influence through some of these stories, those visitors. So they're coming on holiday, they're coming for a break. So you have to be sensitive about how you address that. And most people are quite familiar with Climate Vision's 10 pledges. Well, Trigode have adopted those and tweaked them to the site. So people will go away with one of those postcards and then know what to do at home. So let's talk about, the, the, I think they're putting two and a half thousand pounds, is that correct? Yeah, which is incredible because that's a voluntary investment. And that's just, I think they're amazing for doing that. And that's, that's a price that I've worked out as an average. And, and look, you know, the carbon market is in a real flux legislation is there's a lot going on it's very exciting now let's talk to Richard Lobb because Richard Lobb is from the farm where this money is being invested um, which is at St U, not a million miles away from Mevagissi High Castle Farm hello Richard hello there so what are you going to be planting then with this money that will do the environment good okay well basically we are, are planting uh, two herbal lays um, one is going to be more suited to cutting to uh, conserve forage for the cattle in the winter and the other one is more suited to grazing with our cattle. Um, it's sort of a mixture of lots of different herbs, chicory, clovers, grasses um, and as this year is showing hopefully it'll be a bit more resilient to drought conditions. 
So this herbal lay is a kind of mix then of various plants? It is, yeah, and it shouldn't need so much fertiliser which we've used in the past. Hopefully it's more self-sustaining and will keep growing, hopefully through a drier climate. So in a business sense, if it weren't for the money that Trigode, the, the holiday part there, has invested with you, would it not be economic to plant this of, um, as a business decision? No, it's something I'm still thinking of doing, but this makes encourages me more, and I do think that farmers have got a lot to offer in carbon offsetting, but I do think hopefully it needs to be tied in with food production as well. Had you ever imagined that, you know, because I was saying earlier on, maybe it's just me, my, my sort of perception is that if you're going to carbon offset you buy some rainforest in the tropics somewhere do you ever imagine that your farm would be part of this um no i guess not but talking with lucy and i could see that there was potential and it does seem more sensible to spend the money in our county than somewhere abroad brilliant how's it going at the moment richard with the weather uh quite brown the fields are and most of my cattle are being um supplementary fed at the minute because grass has stopped growing completely oh well fingers crossed mind you i think when we get some rain actually it'll probably come down in quantities that uh, are, are rather overwhelming but richard thank you very much indeed for having a chat really nice to get your perspective so it's an interesting scheme are you hoping this can be extended other businesses sort of working out their carbon imprint investing locally absolutely um and this is it it's a, it's a trial to see how it goes and one of the things that's attractive to all the parties is this is just a one-year agreement and a lot of people don't want to be tied into a contract at the moment while everything's in a state of flux but the government has legislated that we cut emissions by 78 percent between now and 2035 so we all need to really act and jump now but if if we don't it's going to cost us as well so the world bank have said you know it's going to affect gdp by nearly three trillion over the next eight years so this is a really good sound investment and thank goodness for to go to do it um and it's just really important to build resilience and to help people like richard um and how they can hold more moisture in their land. And importantly, down the road from Richard is um, Jeremy at the car park there, Willow Car and Coach Park, mm. that floods regularly. And I met Jeremy Roberts last year. We did um, a DEFRA Pathfinder where we built climate champions, and Jeremy's one of those. And we so we looked at his flooding, and it's a bit of an issue in the catchment there. They have sea flooding, but also water runoff when yeah. we have the big rain. And so Jeremy's really pleased because this is in the catchment, this is upstream from him, and what Richard's doing and where he's planting should hold some of the water back, and that helps the environment. So agency. it's a win-win. Yeah. Let's just sort of finish really by um, reflecting on attitudes. I mean, these, these are, this is a, a local holiday park. You're talking about a local company perhaps benefiting with reduced risk of flooding. You're talking about Richard there with his local farm. Um, are you seeing a grand swell of enthusiasm for this kind of project? Because you've got, in my mind, you've got two counterbalances. On one hand, we are seeing weather, which it's been pointed to as the future, which some people are finding quite difficult to deal with. On the other hand, we're very focused on the cost of living, which is here and now and bang right in front of our eyes. So are you seeing more or less enthusiasm for these kind of projects? It's a real mix because even through that, people are demanding, they want to know about the product they're buying. People are actually doing that still. And that's really important. They want to know the source and where it's coming from. So I think that bit's quite important. The other thing is that quite a lot of people, I think we need to myth bust a little bit here as well. Thank goodness for Mark Carney and something called the TCFD, uh, Task Force for Financial Disclosures. It's actually um, mandatory now for the UK and Japan also is one of the leaders in this where they have to look at their climate risks and they have to do something about it in their financial report. And so that will trickle down to all the smaller businesses and this will become mandatory. And here's Cornwall trailblazing with this wonderful idea. Lucy, thanks ever so much for popping in. Really nice. I, I just can't help thinking that herbal lay sounds like a shampoo. Well, maybe you yeah, might do yeah. an outside <laughs> broadcast there next year amongst the flowers, Julie. Amongst the flowers, yeah. It's a rose between the thorns, or would it be the other way around? Thanks for popping in. BBC Radio.